it's important that we understand that social change comes about because people collectively start asking for it. And I think that's something that every generation has to learn in its own way. It's not about equality. I think that's the thing that's hardest to get across to people. Gay liberation didn't want equality. They wanted a transformation of everything. So liberation wasn't about equality for gay people. It was about sexual freedom for everybody. Everybody was going to be free. But what was so refreshing and liberating about this was you could hug and be friendly with other with guys and there were no sort of sexual undertones or come-ons or whatever. It was totally relaxing. And there probably weren't that many with the women either because <laughs> given the way women were sexually repressed in the 70s, um, it was very difficult for a lot of women at that time actually to initiate relationships as well because we didn't have a language um, and we had to invent a language of our own. And of course it wasn't just about sexual freedom. There was an opposition to monogamy, for example, that was quite strong. Um, the kind of rejection of those, you know, the pair bond and jealousy and all those kind of things. And of course not everybody agreed with all of these ideas, but really they are the ideas, if you want to argue against something, that's what you're arguing against. It was an intensely radical period in Australian history. The campaign, the movement against the Vietnam War and conscription had really reshaped Australian politics. Uh, you know, people were taken to the streets, they were engaged in... Around the Vietnam War there were events virtually every week. You could go to something, you know, a speaking or a teaching or a public meeting or a protest or a big demo. Uh, it was a, a period of agitation. It spread very rapidly to other groups in society, mostly inspired by the Americans, so women's liberation, Aboriginal politics, which took a form of kind of black power, is the kind of term they'd used at the time, uh, and gay liberation, which arrives from, from them. Well, I suppose um, I was one of the initiators of Gay Liberation Front in Melbourne. Um, it was based really out of Melbourne University, but came to uh, represent the whole of the gay community in Melbourne. And um, I've, I had this very strong sense of social justice. I couldn't understand why, as a lesbian, why what I felt was so much part of me and such a natural feeling, why? it was, in a sense, not recognised by society. Melbourne Gay Liberation was probably one of the most, if not the most important events of my life. Um, I was invited to, by friends I was working with to what they called a meeting of gay people. I didn't really know what that meant. It was to be at Melbourne University. Um, my friend at work was the only other, and her partner the only other, lesbians I knew at that stage. We're talking about early 70s, um, even though I'd had a long relationship at school with another girl, I didn't really know any other gay people at all. So I was very excited, I said I'd love to come. I was actually in a bar called the Woolshed Bar, and in those days, because we were so illegal, we were essentially sexual outlaws, the only places we could go to were often fairly you know, dark, fairly divey places. And this place was in the basement of the Australia Hotel. And it welcomed us, it welcomed Aboriginals. People would come, they came out of Pentridge and they go straight there. And as outsiders, it, we were welcomed as well, as long, along with a lot of other alcoholics and so on. It's where you'd tend to gather. And I was there one day and met this vision called Julian. And we went on a date. He took me on a date, and that date was the first gay liberation meeting. 
my gay life, my homosexual life was outside university. And then one day all these little posters started to appear around campus. And I thought to myself, hello, that's probably me. Because I'd made, I'd made a quite strong decision when I was about 12. I'd realised that I actually liked boys and girls wasn't going to be my thing, which made me different from everybody I went to school with. Um, and so when the posters went up about around the uni, I thought, oh, I might think I'd better go to that just in case I meet somebody. And I can't remember, but it was in the Menzies building, the Ming Wing at Monash. And I can remember for, uh, before the lunchtime where the meeting was supposed to happen, I hung about on the campus going, if I go to this, this is going to be a huge joke. And the rugby team and all the engineering students are going to line up outside the building. And as we get out of the lift, we're going to be punched to the ground and kicked to death. But I had resolved and I went, all right, I'll go. The Melbourne Gay Liberation starts with this meeting at, at, um, at the Drummond Street Cafe, uh, restaurant. It starts meeting at Melbourne Uni almost immediately, and so they have Friday night meetings. They're very big meetings, 50, 60 by all accounts. Um, and they are they're doing an enormous number of things. <laughs> Our ideology, such as it was, was very much based on the feminist analysis of society and how the patriarchy oppressed us all. We took that all on board. So what we would do is we would actually explore things like our own sexism, for instance, um, our own internalised homophobia. It was really about coming to terms with the fact that we are good and therefore we can be proud. Well, the photos and the films we made, we, you know, they were for us. We probably um, enjoyed them immensely, particularly uh, where people were out there marching, and, you, know, you know, looking different and carrying placards. And, and these demonstrations were large, eventually. I mean, they, they filled, you know, um, Collins Street or Burke Street. And the footpaths were also filled with onlookers staring trying to work out what was going on. What I always tried to do when I took the photographs, or retrospectively I think what I was doing, was trying to or capture moments amongst all of us that showed us as a family in a way. Because that's something that came out very clearly in our consciousness raising groups, that, that, that most of us had never felt at home in our own families. And so what the gay, gay liberation did was create another family. I guess the, the, the wildly utopian hopes of liberation um, weren't obviously weren't achieved, but so much more was achieved than people really thought could be. You know, a, a lot of it was about, you know, kind of revolutionary overthrow. In fact, the incremental changes were much more than people, liberationists especially, especially would have expected. So it was never aggressive, it was never political, we were just, the power came from being ourselves. And that, to me, was the, the, the nub of, of gay liberation. But having done that, of course, you would want to move out um, into the world and take on people who had challenged you for being sick, sinful, evil. I think it was the impetus for all of the change movements associated with um, homosexuals in society and law reform and a whole series of other things like employment conditions, superannuation, housing and so forth. Um, but it was also the partnership that was established between that movement and other activist movements. 
the fabulous networks of people walking into this room today and, and meeting up with people that I haven't seen for years or largely haven't seen for years. I've been aware of them being busy in our society, um, working for change and being leaders. And that's so fantastic. I feel like I'm one of the foot soldiers, but I think that gay liberation shows you that you don't have to be one of the leaders. You do have to turn up though and be there. And as I said before, don't take no for an answer. In fact, the, the movement managed to reform society quite strongly uh, and, and decisively. But at the time, the sense that we were taking on this huge task wasn't really intimidating to people. It was, it was an exhilarating opportunity and the responsibility of, of doing it was something that people felt very strongly.